This is Lewis Hart from Into Boxing. Delighted today to be joined in London with Calla Sowland. How are we doing, man? We're doing well. We're doing well, my friend, on a day when we announce fights like this formally. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always a good feeling, especially when you really look forward yourself to, to a fight. And Kelly Williamson, or Williamson Kelly, with respect the champ, uh, that's it. it's a cracker, you know, it's a cracker, December the 2nd, in a packed big Newcastle arena. Um, we've done over 2,500 already on the pre-sale, so expect uh, a very, very lively house up there. We know what sport means to the North East, and now they're fighting out for the British title. And basically, the, the, the right to fight uh, for a world title next year, I believe. I mean, ex exactly that, exactly what you just said. It's in the North East, they care about their sport. And I said in a way, almost, this fight sells itself. You know, There's, they're, they're, you know, they don't need the press conferences. You know, it sells itself. It's a real one for the fans. That's why we've done the press conference in London, up, not up in Newcastle. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those fights, you know, the, when we announced it, I didn't realise how big it is. And I, I'll, I'll put that down to inexperience as a British promoter and having more promoted all over the world in my 20 something years, um, it's, it's just, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say bizarre because that would take it away from the fight because it's a great fight, but how the reaction was and how people reacted to the fight getting made have uh, said a lot uh, about it and I'm more excited than anyone else now about it. So yeah, roll on December 2nd. Like you were saying, um, and, uh, and at the Josh Kelly fight when he won, Troy Williamson came in with a Newcastle shirt on. The guy's not, he's not even a Newcastle fan, he said to me, but it's a, it's a great way to sell this fight and the narrative that it's played in the North East. It, was, it, it couldn't be anywhere else but the North East in Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I think uh, Josh has set his stall out since his first amateur fight as a, as a proper Sunderland boy, and, uh, you know, he's in the opposing corner. You've got someone also from the North East, and you know, it's a natural sort of, get that natural derby feel to it. Uh, at the same time, um, look at the actual fight and it, it's, it's a cracker, you know, and I think for, for Josh, it's a cracker on so many, for so many reasons of, of why it's a, a big and important fight, you know. Uh, despite, you know, of course, questions of the questions are, you know, about the Avenizian fight, that period of your career, I, I feel that this fight will shut that off. That chapter gets closed, and I think he wants that closed more than anyone else. You know, that we, he was when this came up, he was so up for the fight. Um, not a second in hesitation. Was a super easy fight to make, which for a big fight is never that easy. Um, and to be fair, Troy Williamson as well, his team all very easy. Uh, Job done. You just mentioned about the Avenissian fight, um, and Troy Williamson said on there that he wants to finish Josh Kelly. You know that he's finished after this. There's nothing left for him. How important is it for Josh Kelly to silence those doubters uh, after the, like I said, after the Avenissian loss? He had a lot of doubters. But how important is it to bounce back for a fight like this to completely shut them up? Um, I think you know. I think, I think you know. Like I said, I think Josh was built up super fast at the time. Um, not boxing-wise, but commercially, like you know, Sky pushed him a lot. They did a great, and that's not a negative thing towards Sky; it's a positive thing. They did a great job in pushing him. Um, when he when he lost that fight, and by the way, it wasn't a blowout or something against against uh, Avenizian. It was, you know, he lost, but it wasn't a one-sided beatdown or something. And he lost at that point very early in his career. Now, there. I think, as he said at the press conference today, he was in a real place of darkness. And, you know, which for me, I can't relate to. I had nothing to do with Josh Kelly at the time. But I see him now, see, you know, see the way he is as a human behind the cameras. He's the most positive, ambitious, courageous boxer you could ever hope to meet. But at the same time, it's like people still have this perception and perception in this horrible social media world of you know likes and whatever's and you know he's not he's not about that but perception wise this is the perfect opportunity to close that door
What would your reaction be to the comments saying that, you know, Troy Williams is saying that Josh Kelly is nothing, there's nothing left for him after this? What was your reaction to that? Didn't I? Um, <laughs> um, well, I'd say one's on the right side of 30 and one's on the wrong side of 30. That's fair enough. Touching on. That was 40, not, not 30, I wish. <laughs> No, look at the look, look at the facts. I mean, he's. He, I, I could I can see what he's trying to do with the comment, but it doesn't really work, does it? No, it doesn't really. And how after this, after getting it's a good that I could convince you as well. <laughs> so, uh, all the viewers are convinced now. <laughs> after this fight for Josh Kelly, if he gets a massive win for Tro uh, go for Troy Williamson, he's got the British title. I know you're a massive advocate for the British title. How special is it that this is a big fight anyway? But to have that British title added uh, added onto it. I, like, you know, the thing about the British title is you're ninety percent sure you got a cracking matchup. You're 90% sure you've got the winner is going to go on to something special in the world. And I think that it's a pure, it's a pure belt. It's a very pure belt you know, in a world of a lot of belts. Um, and, hey, we use those belts as well to get into positions for world titles, etc., etc. But I'm going to use that word perception again. Perceptionally, internationally now as well. The British title is growing, growing. We're going to be live in over 40 countries with this fight. Um, so, you know, that that's already, a, you know, it's a big thing for, for a career of a boxer. But like I said, I like the British belt for its pureness and the fact you, you know you're going to get a proper matchup. You know, it's, it's very rare you get a one-sided mandatory or something like that. It's good, good fights. Lastly, touching on the undercard, um, you just announced a show in York Hall with Harlem Eubank. Is it important now after, obviously, the, the fall-off of Eubank Jr. versus Ben to get all the fighters that were on that card um, on either of this card or the, or the one at York Hall? Yeah, I don't know. All that, they will all be out. and Most of them are announced out already, but but that that show was already planned. That had nothing to do with, uh, with, uh, with the uh, scheduled Eubank Ben fight. Uh, so Harlem was in a, I think, a six-round tune-up. It was, you know, he, he wanted to be on his cousin's card, and we, we liked it as well with the platform, etc. That obviously didn't happen. And but this fight was always planned. It was always his first headline Channel Five night, and I'm very, very proud for Harlem the way he's come through. You know, we've got behind him. Channel Five's got behind him, but most importantly, you know, he's got Adam Booth, great trainer. But he's, he, he, he is so into this. Um, he lives it, and he's a fantastic character, Harlem Eubank. So that has, obviously, has that Eubank name, but he's in for a tough night with, with Farrell. It's a good, good, very, very good fight. Great matchmaking. Uh, I'm not the matchmaker. Our matchmaker made that fight. Very good matchmaking. Um, and yeah, you know, those are the sort of fights we want to see on terrestrial TV. Going to be a cracking atmosphere. Got Chloe Watson on the card as well. Liam Williams in a very good fight as well, uh, which will be announced shortly. The opponent, very, very good fight. Um, his first fight back since the, the Eubank Jr. fight. Um, so, yeah, excited. Lucy Wildheart also making her first performance under us. So, yeah, it's going to be a cracking night. Lastly, touching on the Misfits card in Sheffield, what was that like? Um, what was your thought, whole thoughts on the event and how it went? Still getting over it. Um, yeah, wild, wild. I mean, it's... <laughs> I think we had uh, something like 10 million views of the side events alone, let alone the main event. Um, uh, it's just like craziness, great fun, great honest fun, and you know, roll on Texas in three weeks' time. Uh, Misfits 003, which will be uh, on November 19th in Austin, Texas. Big, big card there as well, just been announced. Honestly, Callum, always a pleasure to spend your time with you. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers. You.